As humanity's longest serving outposts, the two Voyager space probes have penetrated cosmic areas that explorers of the past would not even have dared to dream of. Although the unmanned spacecraft left our home planet behind more than 45 years ago, their mission has still not reached its end. On the contrary, the probes are still transmitting valuable data from interstellar space, proving to us once again what cosmic secrets have yet to be unlocked. Want to know what amazing Voyager observations have been recorded at the edge of our home system? Then stay tuned and be sure to watch today's video to the end. Want to learn more about the groundbreaking discoveries and mind-blowing spectacles in the cosmos on a regular basis? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click on the bell to join us on our journey to the greatest mysteries of the universe from now on. By giving us a thumbs up, you'll motivate us and show that we can keep you engaged with the content of our videos. Astronomical Success Story 14.67 billion miles This is the almost unbelievable distance that now gapes between the Sun and Voyager 1. In the history of space travel, only one other artificial object has succeeded in penetrating as far into the depths of space, and that is its sister probe Voyager 2. When the two NASA space probes left our home planet in the summer of 1977, however, no one could have guessed that the starting signal had just been given for the greatest success story in modern space research. While the spacecraft now transmit information to us from remote interstellar space, their original mission goals encompassed completely different fields of application. To understand why this had no particular research focus, we should keep in mind that the outer members of our planetary system had only been sparsely studied in the late 1970s. In order to significantly deepen our knowledge of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, some basic characteristics of the celestial bodies were to be deciphered. In addition to the investigation of the atmospheres, this also included structural and chemical analyses, geomorphological investigations of the moons, and the decoding of different magnetic fields. After the identical twin probes had set off into the gigantic expanses of the cosmos, on August 20th and September 5th, 1977, respectively. By the way, Voyager 2 was launched before Voyager 1. The first task was to advance into the realms of Jupiter and Saturn. The revealing images that emerged were to help researchers understand our distant planetary neighbors more precisely than ever before. By 1981, it was time for Voyager 1 to head for interstellar space, which no human-made object had ever been before. However, the further journey for Voyager 2 still held some intermediate stops. After the Uranus passage, followed the flight to Neptune. The probe took a look at the bluish shimmering ice giant for a total of five months. In this case too, numerous motifs were to be captured on image. Voyager 2 also added nine previously unknown moons to the star charts. And this is still the only space probe so far that has visited the two outermost representatives of our planetary system. In October 1989, Voyager 2 then followed in the cosmic footsteps of its sister probe. After the end of the Neptune passage, it too set course for the outskirts of the solar system. Advancing to New Worlds while Voyager 1 had already reached interstellar space in 2012, its sister followed about six years later. But what findings accompanied this technical breakout from the solar system? Well, fundamentally, the gist of the information gathered to date can be summarized as follows. Interstellar space is even stranger than previously thought. In order to be able to classify the exciting observations correctly, we should first take a look at the interplay of solar winds and interstellar medium. As most of you probably already know, our mother star is not an immobile celestial body blazing away inconspicuously. In truth, the Sun embodies a kind of nuclear furnace, which hunts the universe with an insane speed of 450,000 miles per hour. Around our central star, there is an invisible network of dynamic magnetic field lines. Along these paths, 
Electrically charged particles escape incessantly, and these solar winds spread over our entire home system and consequently, at some point, also come into contact with the interstellar medium. The main components of the stellar space region are gas, dust, electromagnetic radiation, and the galactic magnetic field. The solar winds and the interstellar medium have the property that they do not mix perfectly with each other. Rather, the particle streams of the Sun form a bubble-shaped bulge in the interstellar medium, which extends about 11 billion miles far. We and the other celestial bodies should be extremely grateful for the existence of this bubble. After all, it protects us from a large part of the cosmic radiation. The data that Voyager 1 collected in the heliopause in 2012 already showed that this cosmic threshold was drastically different from the scientists' predictions. In fact, the interstellar magnetic field is two to three times stronger than the experts had assumed. This leads to the conclusion that the pressure exerted by the interstellar particles on the heliosphere must also be ten times higher. However, since Voyager 1's plasma temperature measurement instrument had long ago failed, researchers looked all the more intently at Voyager 2's passage six years later. For the first time in research history, it was documented what happens when a body approaches within 140 million miles of the heliopause. The plasma surrounding the object becomes denser, slower, and hotter. Speaking of hotter, with a temperature of over 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the scientists had clearly misjudged this circumstance as well. However, since the corresponding plasma has a diffuse and thin character, the temperatures in the immediate vicinity of the space probes are much lower. Furthermore, Voyager 2 provided evidence that the plasma crosses from both sides of the different areas. While Voyager 1 approached the heliopause, it passed a rather static area where a rapid deceleration of the solar wind was observed. The passage of Voyager 2, on the other hand, showed a much different, more dynamic picture. To unravel the mysteries of the heliosphere, follow-up missions are essential. At present, we do not even know what shape the corresponding structure has. When the next probes will follow in the footsteps of Voyager 1 and 2, however, is not yet foreseeable. The Glitch Last year, terrestrial researchers were faced with a problem they simply could not explain. Voyager 1 abruptly began transmitting a jumble of telemetry data to Earth. In the first moment, the conclusion was obvious that an error had crept into the attitude and control alignment. All the more strange, therefore, seemed the fact that the stable radio connection and the trouble-free collection of information pointed to full functionality. In detail, the Attitude Articulation and Control System or AACS, is responsible for ensuring that the spacecraft's main antenna always points in the direction of our earthly home. This is the only way to ensure smooth communication over such vast distances. While the probe uses the appropriate channel to send its acquired data back to Earth, the teams on the ground fall back on the radio link to issue new orders to Voyager 1. The biggest mystery of this technical glitch now consisted in the fact that the spacecraft spit out completely nonsensical telemetry data. But apart from that, it worked as usual. Consequently, both receiving terrestrial commands and transmitting the information from the scientific instruments worked just as well as before. The fact that the signal strength had also not experienced any drops indicated that the powerful main antenna was still pointing towards Earth. While the data anomaly kept scientists' heads spinning for quite some time, at least a partial success was announced a few months ago. Thanks to the work of NASA engineers, we now know with certainty that Voyager 1's attitude control system is still working correctly. However, the AACS system tried to send the corresponding information via an onboard computer that has not been running for several years. Consequently, the distorted signals trickled into the terrestrial stations in the form of nonsensical data gibberish. Open Questions and the Future Once the reason for the glitch had been tracked down, the experts finally had a clue they could work on. Via the radio antennas of the Deep Space Network, the experts transmitted the order to send the data back to the designated, functioning onboard computer in the future. Fortunately, the scientists' efforts met with success, so that they can now enjoy correct telemetry data again. However, what caused Voyager 1 to fall back on the defective onboard computer in the first place 
is still completely unclear. It's possible that the breakdown was caused by another electronic component that issued a faulty command. Although the experts will probably have to nibble away at the background of the source of the error for some time, there is one piece of reassuring news. Just in case, both space probes have backup systems that take effect in the scenario of a problem that cannot be fixed. In fact, one of these backup components has already been used. In 2017, scientists turned on additional flight control thrusters to cushion the fading of attitude control thrusters. There is currently no telling how long the two spacecraft will continue to operate. However, if NASA officials have their way, the end of the mission of our cosmic outposts should be delayed as long as possible. Currently, experts assume that the last Voyager experiments will be shut down around the year 2025. Despite this, it may be possible to maintain radio contact until the mid-2030s. Barring any unforeseen problems, however, the spacecraft will continue their journey well beyond their scientific mission time. In about 40,000 years, Voyager 1 will pass the star Gliese 445, 17 light years away from us, at a distance of 1.6 light years. In 225 million years, at a time when the era of humanity may be long gone, the probe will have traveled a distance equivalent to circling the center of the Milky Way. And now we want your opinion. What do you think about the never-ending mission of the two Voyager probes? Do you think that the technical problems of the spacecraft will increase in the future? As always, drop us your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on our video in the comments below. Want to learn more about the most unusual discoveries in space? Then take a look at the other contributions of our channel, which we have linked here in the credits for you. Thanks for your interest. Take care, and we'll see you next time.